I'm having, having a challenge celebrating my child. I know how important it is to celebrate. I don't feel right now I have lots of things to celebrate with my child, but I want to stay positive and encouraging. What suggestions do you have? I think just cele celebrating that they're moving through whatever challenges they're having. You know, I, I really do. You know, this idea of being able to look and affirm something, you know, this child has a strong personality. That means you've got some leadership skills that may come in. You've got to be able to reframe. That's called a counter narrative. So whatever the narrative is, like, ah, that thing you do is really important. My son had this fire in him that, you know, teach, I'd get the call. I'm like, and I had to tell them, I said, you know, as irritating as this fire is in him, I would rather learn, help him learn how to tame it than put it out. So mm -hmm. being able to reframe whatever that challenge is, whoever your child is showing up to be, because they may be struggling in a world that may not appreciate that. So you have to help them learn how to appreciate this gift they have. How do you see the gifts that they have? The fact that they're still breathing, they ain't burn nothing down, you know, we're all still standing. That is something to celebrate. I would highly recommend Tiny Habits um, by BJ Fogg. And he really talks about this idea of tiny celebrations. When something goes right, however, we got through the morning without yelling, let's do a little dance. Let's have a dance party. So again, it's not necessarily because they got good grades or they're on the path. It's like, you still stand it. You are, you know, <laughs> you are passionate, you have a strong personality, whatever it may be. We have to find that because again, it's not just that they're listening, but we have, our emotions are contagious. Their yes. self-concept is being formed. If they believe you don't like them, or you don't like who they show you to, they are inside, they're going to internalize that. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, here's a question about the balance of, at one point do I get involved, uh, make that phone call to the school? At what point do I let my child uh, take, take whatever challenge that is, that there's that struggle that they have? Well, Where, where's, yeah, it depends on what the struggle is because productive struggle is not the same as I'm struggling because I'm behind. So if, let's get real clear. People who are athletes who are top of their game engage in productive struggle. That's what they do at practice. That's what they do in scrimmages. That's very different. That's a positive stretching ourselves to that next level of capacity. Destructive struggle is when I am falling behind and I feel like I'm drowning. Now there's an emotional component, a negative emotional component. So if your child is having an emotional response to feeling behind, confused, uh, and not on top of it, then how are you partnering? Where are they getting confused? If, the, if it's about the grace, is there anxiety around there? And that's just where it's so important to talk about learning. Where are you getting it, right? When does it stop making sense? So it's not just get your grades up, but this is where you have to be a detective. What's making sense to you? Where do you feel like it's stopping making sense? Or where are you feeling frustrated or anxious? When we can dig into that, and that's why that relationship becomes so important. Mm -hmm. to be able to have that to get mm -hmm. underneath something so the fact is parents and teachers should be talking when stuff is going good they should just be checking in so that when there's a challenge you actually can be in partnership to support the student so again if you're worried about your child definitely check in with the teacher where does he seem to be getting it where is he thriving so we have to ask a wider uh, array of questions, not just, uh, uh, what's going wrong, but what's going right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how do we build on what's going right? Right. Beautiful. This is my last question. And it's a three-parter. What is the message? If, if you had that elevator speech for the teachers that you speak to, what do you want them to know? I want them to know that they are creating uh, an environment, an ecosystem in the classroom so students can grow their own intelligence, grow themselves as learners. 
This is not about opening students' head and putting stuff in. This is about cultivating an intellectually safe environment, partnering with parents. We should be meeting up with parents, honoring them as first teachers. I don't mean an assembly. I mean, literally, let's just have tea. There's no other uh, uh, thing we're trying to do. We're not talking at you. And then being able to communicate with parents in, in a way that has a partnership, not just when something's going wrong. So I try to help teachers shift the pedagogy of compliance. And we see this when there are low performing students and too often a disproportionate number of low performing students, maybe children of color or immigrant students. So what we try to do is to say, how do we actually create a different kind of environment so they actually can accelerate their learning, they can have that intellectual safety to make mistakes and grow themselves as learners. So Retta, you're reminding me about when I heard you speak to the Glenbard teachers, you talked about how great it would be if all teachers put a picture of themselves in eighth grade on their desk. I love that, I just love that. The second part of that question is, um, for the kids who couldn't be here tonight, what, what is the one message you hope that they take away from tonight's talk? I think if we're talking about high school students, that regardless of where you are in your academic journey, um, I really want to encourage them, as I've said before, look beyond the academics, look beyond your academic resume or going to college. Going to college is very important. I do believe that. But our learning will extend the rest of our lives. You are going to learn new things on your job. You're going to, so having the academic mindset, not just around academics, but learning things. Don't stop reading books, read fiction, right? A good story, but also read nonfiction about stuff. I happen to like neuroscience and the brain or how words work. That's just me. Uh, people I know, you know, like other things and I learn from them. So that I want young people to see that there is life beyond school. And so often we make everything for the first 12 to 13 years of their life all about school, only to have them find out after college, it's not about getting good grades or being told what to do, or it's about your ability to continue to learn and contribute to you cultivate your gifts and be of service and however way that feels uh, uh, conducive to you, that life will extend beyond school while you're in school, but also after you've graduated, even after you graduate law school, there's still lots of learning mm -hmm. to do. So true. My the last part of that question then, for the parents, what is the one thing that you hope they walk away from this hour that we had together? To, I really hope you walk away with the idea that you have an opportunity to cultivate a different kind of relationship with students. So a lot of times we think our role as parents is to help our students be good students. When I really want to reframe that is we want to invite them into being powerful learners and that learning doesn't have to be tied to a grade. And that means we cultivate that at home. Doesn't mean you have to be a teacher, things have to be academic. It could be cooking. It could be, you know, whatever, woodworking, whatever it is. What can we teach our students? What can we apprentice them in so that they see you are passionate about learning something and they'll want to be passionate about learning so that they see that you are passionate about learning something. Zaretta, thank you so very much. I, as I said, I and so many others have waited a very long time to host you and it was worth every minute of waiting and I already can't wait to have you back again. I can't I wait to come back. This was great, your, your students are great. All the parents out there, I wish I could see all your faces, but that's way too much for Zoom. <laughs> but I, and thank you. I see all the love, the hearts going up. And just, you know, we're all in this together. We are yes. in this together. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Take yes. It really is. Uh, when one child succeeds, we all succeed. Right, Zaretta? That's right. Absolutely. Uh, this is where we say good night and then we all go hug our children. So Zaretta, thank you so much. Appreciate you so much. Thank you everyone for listening in. Have a great evening.